right, we uh, actually ran out of out of recording space last time, so I'm sorry about that. This is going to be part two now of uh, part seven. So we're at, we're at part seven, part two. Is that uh, yeah, session seven, part two. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And um, we're just this is HD before bed crash course on stars reading group, and we're just going to be. Talking a little bit about the nodes again. So, so okay, so what did we just go over? So Ross says something very interesting. And I was saying how it was my second year of human design studies that I came across this fact, and so I haven't really encountered it for quite some time. That was when I read all the Rave Cosmology materials. I've returned to them a little bit, like when I was doing the sidereal discussions with Richard Mason, and I wanted to kind of brush up on some of my, you know, book eight of Rave Cosmology, stuff like that. But it was really, it was about five years ago that I first... Um, and the only time I really went in depth on that, and so it's interesting. I'd love I'd love to return to it as we are now. And one of the interesting facts out of those materials is that, and this is now what Jan von Denberg says, for Ra, the only way to see a specific relationship in somebody's design to a star is that the star has to be conjunct one of their nodes. Yeah, that's that's really key, and it's something I don't think people are really talking about. And obviously, wherever that happens to be, von Denberg goes on, you can see subtleties in the possibilities of planetary affiliations. All the other attempts of doing interpretations of the stars shouldn't be what it's about. But of course, he confirms that everything influences everything. The design nodes, the great influences of the of the eh, the great influence of the stars in one's life is only something that can be recognized ultimately through one's own correctness, because where they have their deepest impact is in our design node positioning. In that sense, it's most fascinating to look at those stars that are within the range of your design nodes, because this is alignment information, which literally establishes the right direction for the movement of the individual vehicle, how we operate in that environment. So for people who, you know, want to do this at, and I would highly suggest it I, I'd like to do it myself and maybe I can I can uh, report back in the next video it, you know this is um, what you have to do is you have to look at what stars are in the actual position of your notes so first you have to have an astrological reference like the Ray V. Ching or you can find it online you can pretty much uh, what you can actually do is um, and I guess I can show this in, in the next video if I do, in fact, um, let's see here. Yeah, if I if I am able to do that, then then what I'll do is in the, in the next video I'll um, I'll actually show how you can how you can do this yourself, right? So I'll show how you can take your website, your you know body graph from like mybodygraph.com or Genetic Matrix, although I, I don't recommend them or from um, human archetypes or any of these and look at the nodal positions and then you translate that to the astrology of it and then you look that up um, in, in one of these websites that will actually tell you what the fixed stars are. You can do it on astro.com but you can also do it um, there's one that just has all these I mean it's so funny when you read these seven centered things you know like my my star Algol is like it means ghoul it means alcohol. It means pile of corpses in uh, Chinese. And I used to be um, a little disturbed by these things, but now I realize these are just the kind of seven-centered connotations. Uh, but it, it would be interesting to see which stars are prominent in the seven-centered time compared to the new time, like what Van Denberg was saying about Fomalhaut, or Fomalhaut, which is like a, a newer, younger star that will be short-lived because it will die young, so to speak, and have a shorter lifespan, shorter time frame, just like the rave, which is the emerging consciousness that will have a shorter time frame, evolutionarily speaking, compared to the nine-centered uh, being and, and so on. So, all right, let's see what, um, let's adjust that a little bit. Oh, I see what, what, what is it? It's actually this. Is it? Huh. Is it a, uh, oh, it's the mirror. I was like, what is that? I thought something was blocking. <laughs> okay, so. Let's 
the, so this is interesting. So, okay, so I think for this this one, I'm just going to read a little bit more on the design nodes. Then I'll, I'll wrap this up. Next time, I will show how you can do this yourself. And, uh, or in fact, I'll even just do it, I'll do it as a part three. It'll be, it'll be part three. And um, it, so, because I think this will be an interesting, worthwhile uh, effort um, to just kind of as an exercise to do at home. So I'll be back in a little bit and, uh, and we will, we will continue.